What's up everybody, Derek Ting here. All right, today we're doing a review of the Pico projector. I received this projector recently and I wasn't planning on searching for one or I wasn't on the market for one, but I was definitely curious because I travel a lot and I'm always in need of something of a bigger screen to look at my stuff. So having this projector was a pleasant surprise because it's a great tool for my arsenal. Now let's talk about the video quality. So the video quality is pretty high. It's uh, HD, it's not 4K but I can tell just visually that it looks good. Obviously, I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I was shooting with my camera, but it's not gonna, it's nice, it's just gonna look like a bootleg. So I can only kind of give you a rating scale. And I would say in terms of clarity, you know, it's not gonna be as clear as your LED screen, but it looks fairly clear. I would say I give it a seven to eight out of 10 in terms of clarity. And uh, in terms of brightness, it's at 200 ANSI. Now, I was doing some searching on Amazon. I can find stuff around the 50 ANSI range for uh, like 100 bucks. There's some like pretty cheap 70 to 20p uh, projectors out there. So this one gives you pretty reasonable quality. Again, I would say around a seven or eight. It's not gonna be at the high end of a 10, which is like a larger projector. It's just not gonna ach achieve those, uh, those levels, but you know, obviously, you're not getting those projectors in this size and you can carry it around. Normally those projectors are probably like 10 times the size. So overall, it packs a punch for its size. It's not gonna be the highest quality, but uh, 200 ANSI translates to around a thousand lumens and they call it marketing lumens, meaning, you know, whatever people put stuff up, up on, on the list lumens, that's that's around what they're getting. And I think, I think they're pretty true to that. In the real world practical test, when I was doing it at about six to eight feet away from the wall, it was fairly bright. It was casually good, and then the screen size was around about 55 to 60 inches. So when I pulled it back to about 10 to 15 feet, then I could notice, obviously, the screen got bigger. It got, you know, maybe to the 100 inch or beyond, but then, you know, the, the, the brightness was diminishing, but still in a casual viewing, I would have been totally fine with it. I'm just like watching a movie, you know, casually and wanted it on like a bigger version. And, you know, for video games, that would be, you know, it's great, it's got the HDMI. So let's then talk about, you know, the connections on here. On the side, there is a analog uh, focus wheel, which you just use your eye to see how it focuses. It's, it's fine, it's pretty good. On the top, there's some navigation buttons. On the back, there's a USB, there's a headphone jack, and there's also a charging cable. And then on the left side, if you're facing from the back, there's the power button and the HDMI cable. And of course, in the front, there's a projector. So overall, like uh, the buttons seem what you would need. And it's got, I like the fact that it's got the USB built in. So if you wanted to plug in a stick and, and project some sort of document or PowerPoint presentation, and you don't want to have to go through the Wi-Fi, I think that's a great option. Now, when you get into the menu and you're looking at what's going on, you can you can see already Netflix is one of the most prominent ones, and then YouTube is also prominent as an as a application. And I think that's really what they're thinking about where it's going, what it's for. And screen sharing is the third option, which I love because it wasn't so hard to connect my phone to play back photos and videos or any kind of videos that I was interested in. I would only say though, if you are doing it through Wi-Fi, make sure you reboot, turn it off and then turn it on to, to get the screen sharing because I couldn't get it on for the longest time. It took me probably half an hour, 30 minutes. Then I'm like, oh, maybe I should just reboot. And then suddenly it worked and it worked like a charm navigating through my phone, finding stuff that I wanted to play back and boom, I was already rearing and ready to go. If you want to use the browser, that that's kind of an interesting thing too. I would recommend that you connect via Bluetooth, which it has a mouse and a keyboard, which was, I'll personally say I, I didn't do it, but it does have a Bluetooth function, so I'm assuming it works like a charm. Otherwise, this controller is, is pretty good just to kind of get around. It's not fantastic. It's not gonna be a breeze, cause you know, when you're navigating with a keyboard and trying to search and stuff and trying to find things in, but again, casual viewing, especially if you have an interface like Netflix, I think this, this controller does the job. Overall, Who's this for? What is this for? I think it's for a person who travels a lot, wants something light. If you're going to do it for business meetings, I think this is pretty, pretty um, awesome as well. It's very light, you know, because it's battery powered, you don't have to worry about charging. It's five hours. So I think you're going to get some really good life out of it. And, um, you know, bringing it from room to room was fun too. We don't keep a TV in our bedrooms. So having this, and if you want to just kind of sit back and, and you, and you actually did want to project like a movie for the price, 
I think for what you're getting overall, it's very good. On the website, I think it was around 399 US dollars and the list price is around eight or 900 US dollars. At the list price, it becomes questionable whether you wanna get it or not, but you know, if you're, if you're traveling around a lot and you're on the market for something that's pretty well put together, then I think this is a good projector. But if you're thinking twice about it, and if you're definitely on a budget with a lot, which most people are, then uh, around that, you know, four to 600 range, I still think it's a, it's a decent buy if you're gonna get the use out of it. If you're gonna use, if you're just gonna casually use a projector like once a month, once every two months, then I don't think this actually makes much sense for, for most people. And you're looking for something like that, even for like an outdoor projection, you're watching a movie out in your lawn. Yeah, definitely consider and take a look at this projector. I'm totally happy about this. For me, what I'm doing I think is when I'm traveling and I want to look at videos that I'm editing and I want to blow it up a little bit and see how it looks on the projector, maybe adjust brightness levels for the output, then this is actually pretty cool because then I have that option to look at it something big and find the details. And that's happened to me when we were playing back Agent Revelation. I, it was only when it was playing in a theater that um, that I noticed, oh my goodness, there's a couple things that we missed and I was able to write down those notes. You know, even editing on my 27 inch monitor and having those additional monitors, this just does not compare to looking at something at uh, in a larger screen format. Yeah, I love technology. It's so cool. Can you imagine? This is, I mean, this is so cool. And, uh, and I hope this review helps you. If it does, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel for more videos, and uh, I'll catch you next time. All right, thanks.